From the Neolithic Johannesburg Pointed Stone Spoon to Shrewsbury and Sons Number 41 Spoon Fork, mankind has worked tirelessly to develop the best utensil. But it was not until one man's vision reached the patent office in 1874 that this dream was finally realized. I am Archibald Huffington Chatsworth. And this is Huffington Chatsworth's Big Book of Super Important History. Today's Super Important History, The Spork. While we think of the spork as being a contemporary thing, we know that mankind has been perfecting the form of similar marvels of cutlery design since near the time they began to perambulate upon two feet. In 1910, the famed archaeologist Sir Edmund Ethelbert Cornwall III had a chance meeting with history. While at a dig in Johannesburg, South Africa, he spotted a curious form in the ground. Gently brushing away the sand and dirt revealed what scientists would, for a time, referred to as the Urspork. We asked noted historian Thomas Xavier Hamas for his thoughts on the discovery. The Johannesburg stone stab spoon was kind of the first spork, but since it was really a knife combined with a spoon, it's really more of a spnife, and it never caught on simply because there was no way to eat without cutting your tongue. While this is the most ancient example of spork-like tool, it's not the first time the spork would be associated with a notable event. That honor goes to the battle at Fort Smitherson, where the defenders were forced to improvise in the face of their quartermaster's duplicity. Again, we go to Thomas Hamas. During a crucial battle at Fort Smitherson, which also happened to be in South Africa, the regulars discovered the quartermaster had sold all of their bayonets and forks in order to uh, settle gambling debts. Forced to improvise, they decided what they could do is take the long soup spoons they had and saw teeth into them and then fix them to the rifle and use them as a bayonet, thus creating a rudimentary example of a battle spork. Even more important for a person of understanding the use of the spork after the battle, they still had to eat and still had no forks. So for the first time that we have a recorded history, they ate using the sporks that they'd used in the battle. All of this is quite interesting and does give us a roadmap to follow toward the genesis of the first true spork. But it does not answer when the contemporary spork was invented and by who. For that, we must fast forward to 1910 to the laboratory of notable inventor Samuel W. Francis and the U.S. Patent Office. While the, for the spork was used to eat after the battle, it wasn't recorded in history as the first use of the spork because nobody applied for patent. Samuel W. Francis, independently of the South African battle, was trying to figure out the most efficient type of utensil to eat with so he didn't have to switch back and forth. And so he explored all kinds of utensils from all over the world and finally settled on and developed the spork. He then applied for and received a patent in 1874. So he set out to change the world. And while he may not have changed the world, he definitely has credit as being the first person to patent the spork. Well, there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. From ancient man to ancient battles, and finally to the brilliance of an American colonist, British origins, I am Archibald Huffington Chatsworth, closing the big important book on the big important history of the sport.